Okay. I'll kick off by saying hi and welcome to our call, Freedom from Burnout, um, with myself and Danny. See if I can make the slides work. There we are. So just a quick um, run through of what we're going to cover. Uh, introduction, five minute brain dump. For anyone who was on our previous call, you might understand what that means. If you weren't, that's fine, because we'll take you through it. What triggers burnout, how to deconstruct the cause of the burnout, defining how you want to feel, bringing it all together. And then at the end, there'll be a meditation to tune into your body and create your safe place. As we've said at the bottom there, uh, disclaimer, it's our personal experience. And for everybody who experiences burnout, it may look and feel different. So this is just about our ex sharing experience and what work, worked for us. Um, and it's not for any other purpose than that. So quick bit about who we are. So I'm Heidi, I'm a wife, mum, grandmother, step-grandmother um, of six grandchildren now, uh, five step-grandchildren, one of my own. I retired early in 2014 at the age of 54 because I couldn't maintain my job. I had chronic, men sorry, chronic mental and physical fatigue um, and ill health. And I realized looking back, a lot of that was early warning signs of my body saying, you're burning out, you're burning out, you're burning out, you're burning out. And how many times did I not listen? And in the end, I was continually burning out because I just kept going and kept trying to do too much. So Danny, do you want to give a... Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Danny, and I am a wife, mother, caregiver, muse, tea lover, a practitioner of gratitude and compassion. And in 2017, my life shifted when my husband lost the nerves from his knees down. And he ended up being diagnosed with POEM syndrome, which ended up in a whole journey of him needing treatment uh, in another state at a specialized medical hospital because it's so rare. And it resulted in us having to live in two states. And then he just, he was continuing to you know, his health, it just declined. And then now we're on the, the recovery part of it. But, it, you know, being a caregiver, burnout is very, very real. And our lives shifted. I mean, I was taking on everything that he couldn't do. And then he was getting sick. So there was all these levels of stress. And, you know, I, fa I faced burnout quite a few times from that. And, you know, before then, I would just push myself to the point of burnout. So, um, so yeah, and then when we discovered, um, you know, on, on, on my husband's journey, this, the, the last few years has been really powerful for us, mainly because we had life books then, and that just let us to actually help prevent many of the things because we were more about, okay, we have to take care of ourselves as best as we can, because if you get to that point of burnout, then that can actually be detrimental, not only for you, but the person you're caregiving for and the whole family, so. And in terms of the pair of us, we came together through Lifebook. Mm -hmm. um, we became ambassadors, we've continued our journey and we learned a lot and we're still learning. So we don't have all the answers, but we're sharing with you where we've got to really so far um, and the tools and techniques that might be helpful. So, um, and you know, we carry on working together at a very, very deep level, which is beautiful. So how we came together, um, we just realized that we were at such a deep level and a bond of friendship um, that we wanted to do some work together. So we started, we're doing a monthly series every month of the year. We'll be working on a different category and just sharing some things that have worked well for us. And it was all about creating that inner freedom in order to have the outer vision for your life. And if you can't solve what's going on in here, then it's gonna make it really hard to, to create the life that you want out there. So, uh, and that's how the name came to be, quite simply. Um, and we learned key, key tools to overcome burnout and prevent, and prevent it going forward. So 
um, let me just take you on to the next slide. I don't know if you want to pick this one up. If I missed um, it. I can. So basically, burnout, freedom from burnout is something that can affect everyone at some point. I don't know anyone in my life who has not dealt with burnout, suffered from burnout, or experienced bur like someone near them burning out. And many times it's because we have a lack of control. It, there's an imbalance between work and life. Job expectations are out of sync. You can be having difficulty at work. You can have a lack of support. Certain personality traits, <clears throat> perfectionism, not that I'm a recovering one or anything, can lead to burnout because you want everything to be a certain way. Yeah. So, you know, burnout is, you if you have expectations, that's one of the things you might want to examine because it could be contributing to your burnout. It's interesting because when I just researched a little bit about what was... Um, what was the, the sort of characteristics, if you like. Um, and I saw the bit about difficulty at work, which leading up to my early retirement uh, in, at age 54, there was an absolute imbalance between my work and my life. I was completely out of control. The job expectations were completely out of sync with what I thought I was trying to do and what the company wanted me to deliver. You know, they were literally polar opposites. Um, lack of support, absolutely. And my personality, which is, oh, I've got to deliver a, a plus, 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 plus all the time. And I've got to, this constant cycle, this constant will. So this one absolutely spoke to me in such a huge way that says, oh, now I understand. Now I understand. What does that actually look and feel like? So in terms of during the event, what we'd like you to, to uh, and we anticipate that you'll have achieved by the end of the session is to define what it feels like to not feel burnt out. Because actually we do all know that. We might not necessarily appreciate it at the time, but we all know it. And also determining how you want to feel. Tools to use when it starts to creep up and actually recognise that it is creeping up on you. Um, an experience or vision to, co to connect with, a recipe to work you through, and strategies for actually dealing with it. So that's what we anticipate that you'll have got by the end of the session. So we're going to start out with Danny taking you through a brain dump. Alrighty, so... I want everybody to, if you have a pen or paper, nearby so you can jot notes for this. Uh, a brain dump is basically we're going to go inside your brain and we're going to get some stuff and you're going to put it out. You're going to just dump it out on paper so we can deal with it. So if you're just going to take a minute and I want you to just take a deep breath, let it out, get yourself centered and take a moment to think about what are all the things contributing to you feeling burnout? And if you're not feeling burnt out right now, or if you have been burnt out in the past, you can think about those. And think about what are your primary causes of burnout. So we're gonna take another deep breath. We're gonna exhale. I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes. And I want you to write down just dump it all out as many things as you can for what's contributing to feeling burnt out. What are the primary causes for you of feeling burnt out? So. And maybe you feel burnt out because of work. And if it is work, what is it? that's causing you to feel this way. Just everything you can think of that is contributing to how you'd feel. Just to say that can be the what in terms of the work, or it can be the who. Mm -hmm. It 
if you feel you have a lot to do, if you feel you have too much to do. If you're feeling uh, pressure from a particular person or situation. Sometimes we get caught up in the shoulds. I like to say, you know, you should on yourself. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And remember, as you get it out of your head and you get it onto that paper before you, that is going to help you process. Little things, big things, whatever come to mind. If you do have a fondness for perfectionism. Expectations, we mentioned those before. And if you can't think of anything, you can write down, I can't think of anything. But just try to keep the flow going. Mm. Well, you might even have some random thoughts. Write those mm -hmm. down too. Yeah. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's why it's called a brain dump. You're just pulling stuff out of your brain. Mentally, not physically, because physically might be a little gross. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that causes you stress either counts as mm. well. Yeah. I know some people don't like to be timed. So and if you're this. feeling stressed over having five minutes, mm. that counts. <laughs> and, and also think about it, not just from a mental perspective, but it's a physical perspective. It's both. Mm -hmm. What's affecting you? What's creating that impact physically and mentally? And on the mentally and physically, what symptoms even mm -hmm. are you experiencing? What moments of feeling unwell? What did that feel like? What was that? We've got about 30 seconds to go. If you don't finish, that's okay. You can come back to it. We're just coming up with a starting point. So... All righty, let's bring it to a close. And I know you might feel kind of icky right now. So just shake, just give yourself a little shake if you need to, take a deep breath in, exhale it out. And then we can move on to the next part. Okay, so what triggers it? Well, physical or mental collapse caused by overwork or stress. That's what burnout is. So simply put, we take on too much and or our thoughts run out of control. And that's exactly what's going on. Because if you took yourself away from everything and just let that all go, you could come back to a stable state. But we don't because we keep on going and we ignore the signs and the signals our body and mind is trying to give us. Oh, I'll just do that little bit more. Oh, I'll just do that bit more. Oh, I'm sure I can do that. Oh, yes, I know it's midnight, but I've only needed to do five more minutes. 
and you just keep going oh but my boss needs this oh but i must deliver that and we carry on and carry on and carry on and then bam our body packs up physical symptoms are out of control and our mind is in a state of havoc and we can't even think straight so what can you do to stop yourself plummeting into that state so the first part i'm just going to share you and i did experience burnout on a couple of occasions in my adult working life um, and my own personality was i think my biggest problem because i'm the sort of i'm a perfectionist and i was at work and i had perfectionist tendencies nothing was ever good enough my needs to be in control of what I was working on meant that I didn't go out and ask people for help and say, actually, could you just help me with this? I think, you know, that's the work that's been given to me. I'll keep doing it. So that creates a reluctance to delegate to other people. I was a high achiever, a type A personality. On top of that, working too much. And that meant I didn't have time to socialize with people or time for relaxation, taking on too many responsibilities, not enough help, not getting enough sleep, overly demanding job expectations, go back to the earlier slide, little control over my work, high pressure environment working on multi-million pound projects and programs where it's just give, 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 give. So how has your physical and mental health suffered? Are you caring for yourself? What emotions are you feeling? Are you connecting with people? Are you in control of things? Have you thought about the future? Or are you so burnt out you don't even know what the step forward is, let alone how to get there? So what does this recipe card do? Well, at the beginning, the ingredients is just this is what burnout is. Physical or mental collapse caused by overwork or stress. And then you've got several lines under there that some of those you might think, so, oh, my goodness, that sums me up. Or yes, that's definitely part of me. And on the right hand side, there's just typical words that are associated with burnout. And some of those you'll recognize. The directions is about actions and activities that can help you. And the first one on there is about breathing. Well, I know we all breathe and we breathe every day, but that's not quite what it means. It's about conscious breathing. It's about taking steps and it might be in for five, hold for five, out for five. You're suddenly concentrating on your breathing. You're focusing on you in the here and now. So I didn't have these directions back when I burnt out. If I had, I might not have burnt out. But I have got them now. And in the last month, I've got myself to a couple of stages where I've started to realise that I'm escalating up that ladder. And I stop and I go and get help. And it might even be Danny, I'm doing such and such, I'm doing too much. And she gives me a call out. It might be I'm on an accountability call. It might be I'm talking to a member of the family. But I just vocalize the fact that I need help. And it's a starting point. And structuring my day, absolutely critical. Reflecting on my day. So, all of these I've evolved, have evolved since our life book journey. But the one on here that drops off and had dropped off a couple of times in this last month has been one right in the middle there called setting boundaries. Well, <laughs> because I didn't set the boundaries, but I recognized the signs that I was starting to physically feel signs that says I'm starting to feel off something's out of balance i don't feel so good what's going on using the reflect what am i doing how am i doing it what's going on here what's happening and that gives me the time to then say actually i've taken on three more things this week that i didn't plan for but i didn't drop three things off i just took them on i didn't set the boundary that said i actually can't do that right now or reprioritize what I'm doing, which is about structuring my day, which includes prioritizing and priority. 
and having the right conversations with people. So what this is about is having a set of directions and there is a handout that anybody wants that they can let us know um, and we can send that to you or provide uh, access to it. There's a handout which includes the recipe card but equally there's more detailed instructions under each of those and it tells you exactly you know what that means and how to go about that. Um, and, and journaling that's something I do every day and I deliberately look back and, and look at what I'm doing and that's part of my reflection. So that's how I quickly identified and as part of my journal, I have, how do I feel? How do I feel mentally and physically? So that I can consciously think about what's the impact of what I'm currently doing so that I can stop before I hit the crisis. Because I know that the burnout crisis, mentally and physically, will be me being incapable. And I'm not going to take myself to that stage again. Um, so, so we have the handout and we'll also be doing a, a meditation a little bit later uh, towards the end, which will also help with that. So it's just purely there to say stop. Let me focus on me. And let me take some action. All righty. So we've just take a moment and think about that list that you just created and how it feels to be burnt out or close to burnt out or, or stressed. And now we're going to flip the scripts and think about what it feels like to not feel burnt out. So I'm going to set the timer again for another five minutes and I want you to write down how do you want to feel how do you want your days to flow how do you want to feel at the end of the day and what does an okay or a good day mean to you? So start off by how do you want to feel? How do you want your days to flow? How do you want to feel at the end of the day? Maybe the beginning of the day. And you want to try to figure out what that looks like for you. Now, if you're challenged with doing this, because sometimes when we're so burnt out, it's really hard to think of what not feeling burnt out feels like. You can always write the opposites of what you created before. But I'd really like you to think about what you imagine feeling like, how you want things to be, what it looks like. Oh, do your days go smoothly? Is there a flow to your day? Do you want to feel fulfilled or peaceful? So what does freedom from burnout mean to you? I like what Antoine's put in the chat, have a smile on my face. Mm -hmm. What makes that smile on your face? What yeah. makes you smile? What creates that? Exactly, what creates that smile? If you wanna feel fulfilled, what makes you feel fulfilled? If you wanna feel peaceful, what makes you feel peaceful? Oh, that's good. Looking back and seeing mostly successes, feeling yeah. present, conscious, aware, alive in my life. Beautiful. Wonderful. And try to really define what feeling present means or, or conscious or alive, because those mean different things for different people. 
Yeah. Feeling Trust, trusted. Feeling that's trusted. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Hearing where people are and applying what we learn together. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm getting goosebumps. These are good. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Mm hmm. I'm just going to, I'm just going to suggest another one, feeling trusted, trusting yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Energized, focused, but allowing for surprises. Yes. Waking up refreshed, self-belief strengthened, understood, yeah. feeling understood. Yeah. Energized yeah. and looking forward to my day. And I'm going to challenge you too, if you've written something, like feeling understood or feeling heard. How can you do that for yourself? Mm. Because a lot of times we want that from other people. Yeah. But I always like to turn it on myself. Yeah. Am I listening to myself? Yes. Am I understanding myself? I love oh, this. I love this. Feeling a bubbling of energy inside. Excited to go to bed at night and excited to get out of bed in the morning. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Butterflies. Love that. Excited. Mm -hmm. Free. A sense of freedom. That's what springs to mind for me. I like to wake up excited, looking forward to my day, planning projects that, or planning events that just, you know, bring me joy when I think about them. Ah, feeling that my shoulders are relaxed. I like that. Yeah. Okay, we got about 20 seconds to go. Free to define my next step. Love that. You guys are good. <laughs> These are great. To feel the tingling my in my <laughs> body. Love it. Oh my goodness. Being a source of inspiration to others and myself. Feeling better understood by myself is to treat myself compassionately. It's okay to miss out on something. Happy. Don't know. Joy of missing out. Yeah. All right. We are at time. Remember, you can always go back to these. We are just getting you started and getting the juices flowing. Yeah. So I just got to say, what an amazing day. If you pulled as many of those into your day, what an amazing day that would be. Just think yeah. about how you would feel. That's incredible. Yeah. So what's in your list? That's the list you've created in the brain dump. So what about your work, your lifestyle, your personality? What you do, what I did was looked at each item individually and identified what it was about that. So this is going back to your original brain dump list. What was contributing to feeling your burnout? And how is it? What's, what's impacting or triggering you about that? So for me, this is going back quite some time now. I was lo working long hours, 80 plus hours a week. It was triggering me, impacting, because I'm doing nothing but work. My work expectations were too high, or the work expectations on me were too high. And it was above and beyond, seemed to be the new, new norm. I was frowned on if I left on, if I tried to leave on time, exceptional workload, just kept on coming. No one noticed or cared. That's how I felt. Nobody saw that I was struggling. Um, not being able to say no because of the type of character and personality I was, not feeling good enough. My paranoia about my skills started to kick in because I started to doubt and lose belief in myself because I was so burnt out and I couldn't, my brain was starting to fizzle. And I, I can still remember that sensation of feeling of almost like the nerve endings in your body are starting to burn and just getting that physical sensation. I couldn't hear properly. I was on calls and I'd hear some voices and not others. My hearing was starting to change and go peculiar. My body wasn't functioning properly and it was hard and difficult for me to do things and move around. Um, and we may not have enough time to do all of these, but pick one or two that's on your list and just make a start, not necessarily right now, but what's impacting or triggering you about 
maybe the first item that you wrote down or the second item. Just give yourself a few moments just to think about what is it about that that's actually impacting me or triggering me. You've identified what, but now take that what a little bit more, a bit further. What's the impact? What's the trigger? What I've then done is looked at how would I've dealt with it before I was feeling burnt out. So now you're imagining yourself in a non-emotional state. All is calm, normal day. What would you do with each of those items that you put on your list? What if you did nothing? How could you manage it differently? What else could you do? Take the emotion out of what it is that's triggering you and just what would you what would you do? How would you deal with it now? And do you have to do it? Do you actually have to do it? Is it a must have, must do, have to do it? Could somebody else do it? Can somebody else help you with it? What do you want to do? What do you want to have to do? Is it a must? Is it your responsibility? Could you give it somewhere else? If they won't do it, why won't they do it? Because you're asking yourself more questions. You're dissecting the cause of what's making you feel the way that you do. You're breaking it down. And of course, our thoughts and emotions plays a really big part in the burnout. I thought I couldn't say no. I felt I wasn't good enough. My thoughts led to my feelings of paranoia. And I even convinced myself I couldn't do the job at all. Highly skilled, but I couldn't do the job at all. I'd got myself to that level just through my thinking of all of allowing all these things to, to come at me. I'd gone through overwhelm. <laughs> I'd gone from overwhelm to burnout. And what will you deal with first? Well, I'm going to say a big, big, big yourself. You're going to deal with yourself first. And thinking back to the recipe card I gave, there were some directions there. Put yourself first and pull out what on that recipe card am I going to do for me? Now, I didn't put breathe, breathing down there. I could have done. That was the first item on the recipe card. But what I did do is I got help. And that was me thinking about I need to get some help, professional help for me, for my men mental and physical health, uh, health. Physical health. I need to talk to some experts and prepare increase my energy and start to focus on my body and make myself feel better. I needed to have some fun. I needed to stop. I needed to get that into my fun had gone. There was no fun in my day or my world at all because everything felt like torture. Everything was too much. I needed to set some boundaries and agree with people how things were going to operate for me going forward, not just for them. It's a two way and structure my day, putting me first, always. Because if I don't put me first, always, the ultimate result could be something really quite horrendous. And for some people, burnout can result in, beyond poor health, it can result in death mm -hmm. because it becomes that severe. So my deconstruct and what I was gonna do first Logically, you might have thought, oh, well, she'll put down the things that were on the list of the of the work related. But no, me came first. These things come first. And that's exactly what I've done over this last month. That was go and get help. Somebody, I need some help. I'm starting to feel physical. Let me talk to my expert became my partner. In this case, I'm starting to feel this. I'm starting to feel that. And he says, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. And it's just about getting back that reflection time and then starting to do some fun things and creating those boundaries. So for yours, just think about what action you're going to take. And the order of the action that you're going to take is you come first, the recipe card, use those directions. The second action is deconstruct your burnout. So actually what I'm saying to you is before you even, you know, you've done the list, but any time before you do the list, think of you first. 
then you can start to say, okay, this is how I'm feeling, let me deconstruct it. Then you can take action on your priorities. But again, on the third item there, go back to, have I taken self-care action first? Did I look after me first? Because those are the actions you want to take first before you start to worry about anything to do with work. You, you, you. Me, 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 me. It's the only person that matters. Because something I did learn at work after I'd left is, and it's funny because it had been said many years before by somebody very, very senior in the company, and they were at president level. When you've left and gone, the work will still be there. The work will carry on and you will eventually be long forgotten. So don't leave your mark with the work that you're doing. Leave the mark with you by taking care of you. And leave your mark on the world with positivity. Living that non-burnt out life. Closing thought. <laughs> Fill the missing word with whatever works for you. <laughs> you put your own word in there. But value yourself more than all of this, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Have we got some ideas in this? In well, the I think Michael is 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 thinking along the lines of what <clears throat> I uh, thought when I first. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got any other thoughts or ideas, you can lob them in the. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> I love that exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Say it how it is. Say it how it is. <laughs> Whatever word comes to mind, just value yourself more. Yeah. Yeah. Can I repeat what the president said? Word for word? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but basically what her words were, or the essence of what she was saying was, the work will continue beyond you mm -hmm. so when you've upped and left and gone from the company or the work that you're doing you will be long forgotten so when I was working for the company and I worked there for what 36 and a half years people there won't know who I am they won't know what I did they won't know what I contributed they won't know how hard I worked they won't know how I felt they won't know how much I gave everything and beyond to the job long forgotten long forgotten so how do i leave my mark on the world is by what i do and how i take care of myself and how i show that to other people around me that's the greatest lesson i think i've learned but her words from all those years ago which didn't really have much meaning then i absolutely understand them now And, and, and that was, you know, somebody in a very senior position and she was a woman in a very senior position. And she said, basically what she was saying to me is don't give the job that much. Don't give your all. It's not worth it. Look after yourself. I wish I'd heeded the message for all those years, but I didn't. But I love the fact that her words come back to me now. I'd like to add too that from a caregiving perspective, if you are caregiving for somebody and you do not take care of yourself, you cannot keep taking care of the person that is in your care. Yeah. So be it for work, be it for being a caregiver, it's the whole oxygen mask theory. And we've We've discussed this before. If you don't put your own mask on first, you cannot give to other people. Yeah. 
And if you're not breathing for yourself, which funny enough is the first thing on the recipe card is breathing. Exactly. If you're not breathing for yourself and, and taking care of yourself and managing how you feel mentally and physically, you can help. What are you going to do? So the piece of work that you think, so I've got to get that done today. I've got to get that done today. I've got to get that done today. What happens if you don't? What really happens if you don't? Mm -hmm. As uh, uh, Michael said in the chat, you cannot pour from an empty cup. No, you, you can't. cannot pour from an empty cup. But we all think we can. And we think that empty doesn't really mean empty. I've got a little bit more and a little bit more. And then suddenly mm -hmm. you've gone beyond empty. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So, Danny. This is my favorite part of the meditation. So if you want to get comfortable and settle back, I've created a special meditation just for you. And um, we also have a recording up on YouTube that um, is linked there. And, uh, but get yourself settled, get yourself comfortable. Close your eyes. This meditation is when you need, when you're, if, if you're feeling, um, this is a meditation when you just need to tune into your body and to, it's going to, we're going to tune into the body. We're going to create a safe space. And I like to use this, uh, another term is, a, uh, it's, it's kind of a restoration meditation because it's going to it's restorative in purpose. So if at any time that you feel uncomfortable or this isn't working for you, just come back to your breath and focus on the inhale and the exhale. Uh, you wanna breathe in what you need and exhale any tension. So your breath is always the centering point. If you get lost in thoughts, come back to the breath. All right, so Fill your body sitting, close your eyes and connect with your body. As you inhale, feel your breath come in through your nose. As you exhale, feel it leave your lungs and feel your body just settling into your space. Maybe you feel the chair beneath you, the floor, Whatever your body is resting against, feel that support. The next time as you breathe in, just settle as you exhale. Feel that release of your body, just settle in. Feel what's supporting your body. Take a moment to pause. If your feet are on the floor, maybe feel the feet and the, feel the floor beneath your feet. Connect with your toes and the bottoms of your feet. And how are they feeling today, right now, in this moment? Bring your attention up to your ankles. Connect with your ankles and how they're feeling today. Bring the attention up to your calves and your shins. You might sense some tension. Maybe you feel relaxation. Bring your awareness up to your knees. How are they feeling today? Bring the attention up to your thighs. Focus on your hips. Focus on the area around and behind your belly button. Focus on your belly button. Bring your attention up to your waist. Remember to breathe in between. Focus on your upper chest. 
As you inhale, focus on your lungs. Ah, focus on your heart. How does your heart feel today? Is there any tension there? Do you feel any gratitude? How are your shoulders feeling right now? Focus on your arms, your elbows, your hands and your fingers. Inhale again and exhale. Focus on your neck. This holds up your head. Bring your attention up to your chin, to your cheeks, to your nose. Bring your attention to your eyes, your ears. Bring your attention all the way up to the top of your head. Take a deep breath in. Exhale and release. <sighs> Focus on your entire body. Is there anything your body wants to tell you? What do you hear? What does your body want? Just let things surface. Inhale again, exhale any stress or tension. Inhale and center, exhale and release. Inhale and center, exhale and let it all go. Inhale deeply into your body, giving thanks for all it has done for you and all that it is going to do for you. As you exhale, put your hands over your heart. And just take a moment to focus on your breath. We're now going to go on a journey into a safe space beyond your body. A safe space where you can stop, pause, and really rest and restore. Inhale, exhale any stress or tension. And take a moment to just imagine and feel yourself being surrounded by love. And this love is wrapping you up in a big hug. Surrounding your whole body with love. Imagine that squeeze. And now let your consciousness float up to the tip of your head. And imagine that you are being transported into a safe space. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? What does this space look like? Is it in nature? Posh five-star hotel? Cozy home in the mountains? An open beach hut? Maybe you're laying in the grass making daisy chains. But look around this space. What do you see? What stands out to you? If something stands out, go and explore it. Make note of it. What in this space relaxes you? What words come up?
What are you doing in this space? What are you experiencing in this space? How do you feel? Do you hear anything? What do you see? Do you smell or taste anything? Take some time to explore and feel. You are safe. When you're ready, focus on your heart. Make sure your hands are on your heart. And just inhale. And exhale. Ooh. Know that you can return to this safe space whenever you want to. You only need to imagine it. When you're ready, wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, maybe move your body back and forth. Take in an inhale. Let that feeling of safety you felt move through you all the way down to your toes. Gently exhale slowly. Inhale again, feeling that sense of safety. Exhale and release. Gently, slowly. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. If you want to jot down some notes about what your body wants you to hear or know, or how your safe space looked and felt, or anything else that comes to your mind. Take a few moments to do that now. So oh, I see we have a question. Yeah. What do we do when you see your loved one going through major challenges, how do you help them move forward to help themselves? You're not gonna like my answer. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You can hold space for them, but if you hold space, you have to be prepared. It's their space. Mm -hmm. So can you hold space without judgment? Can you listen? Because you can give them tools, but are you okay with them not listening to those tools? Not using them. Or not using them? Mm -hmm. I think the best thing is being able to hold space would be my two cents. And, and that's not easy because to hold space, you, it's, it's a non-judgment. Yeah. So if they're doing something you don't like, Holding that space without judgment. You know, you can offer things, but but they may not be open to offering either. So it's it's really about, I don't know, Heidi, do you have anything you want to add to that? Appreciate them for who they are. Yeah. Appreciate that they are in the space that they are. That may not be where they want to be, but it's where they are. And it's not your responsibility to lead them out of that space. You can show them through your actions and what you do. So out of burnout, if you've been burnt out, then you need to be putting the tools in place for yourself so that you know what it now feels to not be and how you can prevent yourself getting there. If you're seeing somebody else burnt out, by all means, say to them, I found some amazing tools that have really helped me. Let me share those with you, and then it's up to them. You can do no more than that. You can provide, 
and say, here's some tools that worked for me. See if they work for you, but then step away. And that's the hardest part of all. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely, Michael. Be ready when they ask for help. And that's the, that's the gap. It's actually not stepping into the gap. It's allowing the gap. It's allowing that space. So it's like when you you ask somebody a question and then they don't answer you and you feel like you've got to fill the space. No, you haven't. Just hold the listening space. And that space might be 10, 15, 20 minutes, two hours a week. But I just allow them to come back when they're ready. But at the same time, I want to add, it, in some people holding space, if your cup is not full, mm. if you are burned out, holding space is going to be really hard because that does take a lot of energy. Yeah. A lot of energy because you want to come from a space of love, of non-judgment. Yes. And there are people who want you to hold space for them. But like, if you're dealing with someone who is like, oh, this, I can, I can go and I can, um, you know, I can, you know, cause sometimes holding space is that person, you know, how do you feel if that person is dealing with the situation and it's the same situation and you know, that, say, maybe you know that all they need to do is this one thing to get out of the situation, but they are not ready to take that step. And that can be exhausting. So sometimes you have to set boundaries when you hold space. And Which be goes like, back to the recipe card. Yes, <laughs> boundaries. exactly. Exactly. So, there's, no, there's nothing to stop you asking somebody, do you need some help? How could, how could I do that for you? But equally accept the fact that they may say, no, thank you. Or mm -hmm. I don't want your help or go away or, you know, and that's not personal to you. It's just they're saying, I'm not ready for this right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready for what you're going to tell me right now. That can be really hard. Yeah. I like what Sophie said here, remind them of their worth yes. and actually remind them that you value them yes. and that you appreciate them. And that's appreciating them for their whole wholeness, their whole being, for the words that they speak, whether you agree with the words or not, just appreciate the whole of them. So I, I see a comment here. Would you suggest the same with coworkers, employees, employers you see going through or heading toward burnout, people you may not particularly be close to? Um, you can always suggest tools. It's just you have to be prepared that I like to say, here's my two cents. You can take it or leave it. And then I have no attachment to, you know, like this is what worked for me. It may not work for you. It may work for you. Do what you will. Like, here's my offering. Yeah. Do what you will with it. And once I give it, I have no attachment to the outcome or what the person does with it. Because like, we've, I, I know people in my life that are, that are headed towards burnout. I, I have someone in my life that I care about very deeply who is right now in the midst of a very dark and deep depression. And they are at that phase where they can't see a way out. They're not willing to ask for help. Like they know what they need to do, but they are not ready to take that step to do what they need to do for the next step. And so all I can do is check in and, you know, they, they are burned out. They, they are burned out. They are, they are, depressed they are overwhelmed they are all of these things and in the past i would be like have you tried this tool have you tried this tool have you tried this tool well they are not I, open to and overwhelmed them even more <laughs> exactly exactly so now what i do is i just listen and love and i like to put my hand on my heart and fill my heart up with love and just imagine like because usually i talk to them on the phone i just imagine the love flowing through the phone to them and i hold space and it's hard because my relationship with this person in the past, I was a fixer. And so if you've been a fixer and you're used to fixing things, 
and you stop fixing, that's a whole other story. Maybe we'll cover <laughs> another but event. Stop another fixing. event. But I listen and I let them feel heard. I listen to what they're saying. And I love them for who they are and where they are. And in the past, I would have gotten so angry, which did not help anything. It made it worse. But I also know I have boundaries. So I have to be very careful that my cup is full because if I, I, it's hard for me to hold space for someone in that position when I'm not taking care of myself. Because if I'm burned out, I will be snippy or I get grumpy. And that's the last thing that that person I love needs. Going on to just also picking up on Dorinda's question, what would I do? Suggest with coworkers, employees, employers. If I was back in the corporate world now, I'd actually be running a little mini campaign. <laughs> and I've done little mini campaigns in the working environment in the past. And one of them, which I remembered literally just the other day, was a campaign about remembering just to say thank you. And I actually ran a campaign and I got agreement from my bosses at work for me to run this little mini campaign. And we had posters, even in the men's and ladies' loos on the doors and posters on the wall, just to remember to say thank you. And it had quite a, a huge impact on such a big organisation. So what would I do now? I would be running a little mini campaign that says burnout is real. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. And start to get people talking to each other about what it feels like for them start to get them to be a little bit more vulnerable and open and start sharing with each other tools and techniques what works for you what hasn't worked for you you're not making any judgment you're not saying this is what you've got to do you are just sharing so that's what i would be doing now i like michael's suggestion in in the in the chat that ask them where they are at and then completely listen Yes. Not a, how are you and walk away, but really listen to them. That's where I was talking about, about, we all want to be heard. You know what it feels like when someone does not hear you. It can feel very dismissive. It can, it can trigger it, uh, many things and many people. So by listening, that can be hard. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it sort of ties into the next it's comment wrong. about if you hear the same story, <laughs> story. over and over again, because there are people who love their story. Yes. And they like to tell their story. And some of them want out of their story, mm. but they don't know how to get out or they're not willing to leave their story because sometimes the story is beneficial. But it's, it's a safe place to be. It is a safe place to be. But I, I like how Michael said, and I'm going to totally use this. So thank you, Michael. How long do you want to continue to experience that? Yes. Because they don't like when you challenge their story. <laughs> and another really good question to ask is, what would someone have to believe to get out of that situation? Mm. What would someone have to believe to create the next stage that takes them to something better? They may not be able to answer the question, but if you can ask a simple question. But don't expect to get an answer. That's not normal. That's for them to answer for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't have time to listen, don't ask. Absolutely. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I actually did a listening workshop once. Maybe that's something we should consider, Heidi. There's an interesting one. Yeah. Well, yes. We are past time, <laughs> past the hour mark. I've always gone past my due by date. No. <laughs> ID go past time never. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you so guys are welcome. amazing Thank comments you. in here. Amazing yeah. comments. Yeah. Thank you are two very powerful words. Very, yes, very powerful are. words. So. Yeah. That's a tool you can use with others too. Like thank, thank, just, you, you know, just be thankful 
or just saying thankful, telling someone I appreciate you is hearing them as well. If they've done something. Yeah. Well, great. And, and as for bosses who harass you, that takes courage. If you're in life book, then character category and emotional categories are crucial there. If you're not in life book, then we'll try and pick that up on a, um, another event because we are going to be covering emotional and beliefs. But you don't have to accept harassment. It's a form of bullying. It's a form of bullying. And, and you can build resistance to that. And if you need help with that, then reach out to myself and Danny. We can help you with that. Right. Are we putting this on YouTube? Yes, we are. We'll be putting it up as um, a particular view. So it'll be the view of the slides. thank you all for joining yeah, it's been, thank you guys and i hope you got some value from it and thank you love to stockholm yeah. and everywhere else everybody is because i know that there's lots of people from varying places around the world so that's fantastic thank you yeah. and feel free to if you have any comments questions